Hello, art people. Today, we're going to be starting a new lesson called Preposition Still Lives. The first thing that we're going to do is get out our reference images. So if you are a bear, you can get into the fourth grade folder and get out the reference images for this. Give one to everybody at your table. And once you get your reference images, you guys can look through them. Okay, so here we have our inspiration artist for this lesson, who is named Paul Cezanne. Here are his still lives. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right now, and we're going to watch a video called How Paul Cezanne Changed Art by the Tate Kids YouTube channel. So this will teach us about Paul Cezanne and will also teach us our vocabulary for today, which is still lives. Okay, now that we've learned all about Paul Cezanne and still lives, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Here's some still lives that I made last year when I taught this. Some teacher examples. Some student examples from last year. Some fall themed still lives. Other still lives. More still lives. And this last page is prepositions. We won't use this one today. We'll use this page later. So your job today is to start your own still life painting. We're only going to be drawing your subject of your choice, whether it's a bag of popcorn or some squishmallows, whatever you choose. You'll have to draw those and paint them with watercolor today. You need to draw at least three items. Okay. So now let's get out our mixed media paper. Let's let the alligator get the mixed media paper. If you are an alligator, you can get this one for everybody at your table. Alligators, you can now get everybody a pencil and an eraser. And you guys are going to be allowed to either draw with your paper this way, portrait tall, or landscape, which is long and shorter. Still lives are usually in the landscape. First thing we do is always the same. We pick up our pencil and write our name in the bottom right corner, right down here. And our class, which is four, and the first letter of your teacher's last name goes next to the four. Then you can draw a box around it to remind yourself not to paint inside. All right. As always, you can pick out what you want to draw. Um, you can pick it out from your brain. From my tutorial that I'm going to give, I'm going to do pumpkins or from the reference images um, I've printed out for you or a combination of any of those things as always, but we're gonna be at a voice level zero for the first part of this. That way those who are following along with tutorial can hear. All right. Okay. I'm gonna be looking at these pumpkins as I do mine. Okay, so I definitely recommend first drawing your table. Um, traditionally, still lives are done on tables. So we can just draw a horizontal line. We always draw it light before we've what? Got it right. So we're drawing really lightly. This is the back of my table. I can always change the shape later to make it skinnier or like round, whatever I want later. Now I'm going to lightly draw one of my objects. Remember, you have to do at least three. So first I'm gonna draw this pumpkin. So to draw a pumpkin, first I'm just gonna draw an oval. Something like this. And remember, anytime we cover something up, we can erase it. That's called overlap. So I'll cover, I'll raise the back of this table since I covered it up. Now I'm going to do these lines here that are going down my pumpkin. So I'm just going to do curve line here. These are kind of like parentheses lines. Curve line. And then as I get to the right side, I'm going to do my curve lines the opposite direction. Like so in parenthesis. Okay. And then from here, 
I'm going to do like um, a rainbow type line connecting these um, spots up here. And then for this one, I'm going to go all the way around and in. Here I go. All the way around and in. For these, the bottom of my pumpkin, I'm going to do smile lines to connect the lines that are going down. And on the last one, I'm going to do a smile and then all the way up and in. Now I'm going to do my stem. So I'm going to go in, out, and around. And then to make this line a shape, I'm just going to do the same line over on this side. So in, up, and around. And then I'll connect them. And now I'm going to draw another pumpkin going behind it. So I'm going to do another oval. And again, just my parentheses lines, curve lines going down. And just like last time, I'm going to do my rainbow lines to connect these. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow all the way around. Rainbow, rainbow. And on the bottom, I'm going to do smile lines. Smile, smile. Smile, smile. And my stem. So this time I'm just going to do a curve, curve, and connect. And I'm going to do one more pumpkin. This one I'm going to be able to see the top of it a little bit. So. Another oval. And this time I'm going to draw an oval up at the top, and this is going to show me where my stem is going to go. So from this stem area down to the bottom, I'm going to do my parentheses lines. Curve, curve, curve. Curve, and I can keep going back now. Kind of looks like a beach ball. Curve, curve, and curve. And just like before, I'll connect the bottom ones with the smiley. Smile, smile, smile. And then the top ones with a rainbow line. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. And then from here, I'll do my stem. I'm going to have this one maybe more straight up and connect. And as always, we covered something up so we can erase it. That's called what? Overlap. Okay, next step is to erase my sketch lines, which were my messy lines here. And I can actually go over my parentheses lines too. Because now that I've got them right, I don't have to draw them light. So we can go over them again. If you'd like, you don't have to do this step. Okay, and then all my sketch lines in here, I'm going to erase. So it's nice and clean for when I paint. 
because once you paint over pencil, it's pretty hard to erase it. I'm going to continue doing that. You guys can talk quietly to your friends. My tutorial is over.
Okay. If you are the kitty cat, you guys can get out the box that looks like this. And the only person who is allowed inside this box is the kitty cat. So there are a variety of watercolor palettes in here. Don't really need these lids. So the kitty cat might give you your own. She might have you or he might have you share with the person next to you. Might just put this in the middle of the table and you can all share. If your palette is so dirty that you can't get a color that you want, talk to your kitty cat about it and they're going to help you. They are in charge of the watercolor. If you are out of a certain color, talk to the kitty cat. They will help you. Kitty cats, if someone asks you for help and you don't know how, just let me know and I will give you a little training session on how to help your table with watercolor. But um, you might already know from last year or from another lesson that you were a kitty cat for a watercolor. But if you don't, that's okay. Happy to give you a little training session. Just ask me. If you are the puppy dog, same thing. So you are in charge of water and paint brushes. So you can get this caddy and put it in the middle of your table. And again, if you guys have any problems with your brushes, tell your puppy dog. If your water, if you can't paint because the water is messed up, then tell your puppy dog. And puppy dogs, if you need help fixing those problems, you can ask me and I will give you a training. In case you don't know where the extra water cups are or anything like that, I will help you. Now, that being said, um, just in case you guys don't remember, this is how you use watercolor. You, you, it has to be wet in order for it to work. Right now it's dry. To make it wet, you don't pour into it. We're not pouring water into the watercolor palettes. You make it wet by wetting your brush. So you dip your paintbrush in water. And then I like to say, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey in here. And then you paint. Okay. And when you switch colors, of course, first you have to clean your brush. And this is how we clean our brush in my classroom. Swish, swish, swish. Slide, slide. We do not go. Why do you think we don't do that? Yeah, it splashes water everywhere. So swish, swish, swish. Slide, slide. Perfect. If you do want to mix colors, like you want to mix a couple of these together, like to make your own green, if you wanted to do yellow and blue to make your very own green, you can ask your puppy dog to get you a palette. We have, um, these are watercolor mixing palettes, these clear things. And you would just mix them over. So you would grab a little bit of color you want. Grab a little bit of the other color you want and you mix it over here. I don't need green in mine, so. Okay, you guys can go ahead and paint.
Okay, you guys, that is enough work on this painting for today. Next week, we are going to work more on this. Um, first, we will draw our background, and then we'll paint the background. So you guys did an awesome job today. We'll work on this next week and the week after. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.